Panorama TV presents How They Do That, where we explore the world of professional photographers and share their techniques with you. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of How They Do That. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, this week on the show, we have a portrait, lifestyle, and wedding photographer. Her name is Diana Elizabeth, and we caught up with her in her office. So here's our chat with Diana Elizabeth. All right, well, here we are with Diana. Thank you so much for uh, inviting us to your space here. This is actually a room in your house that you converted to a studio, is that right? It used to be my second bedroom, um, a guest room, but it wasn't really utilized. So I figured if I put in some hardwood floors, it would be better off as an and office. That's awesome. I love this place, and it's a great place to meet clients and uh, just do some work. Yeah. Well, let's talk about some of your clients. You shoot weddings. You shoot portraits. Um, mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about that. I shoot a lot of uh, maternity, newborns, and mm -hmm. weddings as well. So all people. All people. No still lives. Unless I have them hold something. Yeah. So if it doesn't talk to you, forget it. You're not... <laughs> um, no, not really interested. <laughs> so all that kind of stuff. Great. Well, um, let's talk about the kind of shooting you do because this is actually not a studio space. This is an office space and where you meet right. clients. Mm -hmm. And d do you have a studio? I don't. I prefer natural lighting. So I like to go out in fields or um, parks and things like so that. So everything's on location. Everything is. All your uh, wedding stuff is very photojournalistic, which I love. Yes. Um, so amazing stuff. Well, let's talk. We have um, some photos here that I want to go through. But first, let's talk about the kind of cameras that you use. Tell us about this guy here, the Olympus OM-1. My dad gave this to me for Christmas. Um, or actually, it wasn't Christmas. It was when I was back home over the summer. And it was just when I already knew about photography, so I actually got excited about it because I knew how to use it. <laughs> so it took me back. And I love this thing because my first camera is actually an Olympus OM-10, which is very, very similar to this. So uh, it brings back memories. Um, but now, actually, you're shooting with this guy here. This is the uh, Canon 5D Mark II, mm -hmm. um, full frame. Now, tell us a little bit about um, the lenses that you use. I noticed a lot of your images have really shallow depth of field, which makes everything look great. Mm -hmm. Are you shooting mainly with a 50 millimeter? Usually I stick with the 50. Um, if there tends to be a, a gorgeous backdrop or mm -hmm. setting, uh, then I'll switch to the 35. Right. 1.8, I believe is what I have. Okay. And you also have a 70 to 200. 35, 1.4, sorry. Okay. That's all right. <laughs> Um, and you have a 70 to 200 lens? I do. Right? I use that I actually for, have it down here. Yeah, you can go through my camera bag. Yeah. Um, Look at that. I use that for ceremonies, so I'm not up close and I can still uh, allow them to be intimate and not be in other people's mm -hmm. ways like uh, guests, things like that. And so this is uh, during the ceremony you're shooting this? Ceremony only. Okay, and so at the reception you're on a 50 or just a 85 maybe? 85 maybe. Uh, sometimes if I let the couple go off and let them have their moment, but I need to get a little bit closer. And then do you prefer getting like, I mean, with this lens, you really have to you get do. in close. Yeah. So is that something that you prefer because you're sort of in the moment? I mean, me, I like to get back a little ways, but. You know, my clients don't seem to mind and I think <laughs> I make a bond really quickly with uh -huh. them. So they're okay with it. I haven't had any complaints so far, but if I feel like if I scoop back a little bit, they'll be a little more intimate, then I'll switch to an 85. Yeah, so I'm looking at some of these shots of Allison and Diana Liz, that, well, Allison Shiloh, is that's Allison yeah. and Shiloh. Allison yes. and Shiloh, mm -hmm. okay. Um, some of these shots, just beautiful. Are these shot uh, with the, the 50? How did you, tell us a little bit how you shot these images. Those are with the 50, and um, actually the one where she's laughing over his shoulder, mm -hmm. I said, Shiloh, I give you full permission to grab her butt. And so he did, <laughs> and that was the reaction that she gave. And I like to allow my couples to be in their own element, and um, I told them to get on the ground for this next shot, and I, I said, I'm just gonna switch lenses really quickly, mm -hmm. and he was just playing with her hair. And I just said, stay right there, because that is something Perfect. that they would normally do. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want to capture at those moments. Another really interesting thing that you do is you really crop tightly. I mean, really tight. In fact, some of these shots, their faces aren't even in the picture. They're like chopped out. <laughs> I really do it on purpose. <laughs> yeah. And so um, when clients see that, do they love it? Do they go, hmm, what, what the heck? My face is chopped <laughs> off. Um, um, some of these, I just love this. I love that style. But how, yes. how, when did you start doing that and why? You know, I, I don't, I, when I started, I, I would always ask them to bring props, flowers. And when girls were engaged, they would love to show off the ring. So I would crop and get that. So it started mm -hmm. to, I would back up a little bit. Then I realized how beautiful the collarbone is and holding something or the details of a shirt. And so, or even when they bring sprinkles cupcakes to an engagement session, right. 
it just seems to be my style where I backlight them and overexpose and it just adds a little more detail. Yeah, and the neat thing is, so your background, you have a background in journalism and graphic mm -hmm. design mm -hmm. and modeling. Yeah. And so uh, it's obvious that you bring all of that into your storytelling because um, you can sort of see how you're, you know, walking through these different moments. Like there's a shot that I really love of uh, the hands on the tummy is the heart oh. shape, you know, mm -hmm. so it tells the story. You know, we're going to mm -hmm. have a kid and we love that little baby that's not here yet. Um, but you also, look, it looks like you have these great details, like the car where you have not even the entire steering wheel, but just a little portion of it. And here's mm -hmm. the chrome and here's the fine details or the horse and here's the, you know, the star on that horse. Um, again, is that something that you, you uh, pre-visualize or when you get to a location, you just go, hmm, cool. Oh my gosh. I get nervous before every session, always. And I, I never know what is going to happen, mm -hmm. what the weather's going to look like. If there ends up being 10 families there, so I'm shooting like into Disneyland. And I, I just have to trust that I will find the little details. And that's what I look for is when I'm going through, you know, and, I, and I'm looking through my viewfinder, I'm just, it's kind of like ADD. I'm looking at the lighting. <laughs> I'm looking at the way my clients are posed because I'm looking for good angles and modeling poses. I used to be a stylist as well, so I'm looking at wardrobe. Are there buttons missing, mm -hmm. threads? I'm just going through and it is, it takes, I'm just like, Okay, click. Right, so, so it's, it's all of that. It's a lot. I feel like I am exhausted after a shoot because my brain mm. is on overload. But I think it's important for me. It's not just capturing a couple and, and what they're doing, but it's the details of the way that he holds her or the way they hold hands. Right. Um, I look for that because I think that tells more of a story and couples really like that because they just feel like, oh, you got our Converse sneakers. We're just the Converse type of couple. Right. So. Um, one of the things that I think is interesting, so a lot of the people that are watching this show are emerging professionals. Those mm -hmm. are the people that are just, they want to become a professional. They're not quite there yet. And we get lots of emails, hundreds of emails. And one of the things that people comment a lot about is, you know, at what point do you stop being nervous at a shoot? And at what point do you know everything that you need to know about what to set your camera on? And I think it's funny because I think the secret is you never You don't. Know. I do. <laughs> when I'm there, maybe that's when I should retire. I don't know. Yeah. So, I mean, do you have advice for those people that, you know, maybe are a little nervous about taking on that first professional job? Um, yeah, I would say shoot until you're comfortable. I think I shoot completely on manual mode. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's important to be able to know where to find good lighting. So if you're in a situation, there's always there's got to be one spot in that whole location that you can shoot and be confident that you're going to get a good shot and, and good lighting. But it, it's the confidence of knowing that your product is getting stronger, but you're never, I don't think I'm ever going to be like, piece of cake when I go into this. There's no <laughs> way. <laughs> so there's people involved. There's weather elements. There, something can be closed. I mean, I, you can go, there's so many things that can go wrong. Nice. And so I, I think that What's important to me is when I shoot, I try to shoot as perfectly out of the camera. I know that I overexpose a bit, so it's less Photoshop. I don't like to be in front of Photoshopping. Mm -hmm. I, that's not where I feel like I should correct my images. So I show my clients immediately after I take a shot so they can see, do you need to reposition anything? Right. And so I would say when you feel that confidence that you can go out and you're comfortable around people, and you know your camera settings really well, then then go for it. So I mean, uh, having being a little nervous is different than not preparing. So right. Um, and I know that you prepare almost to the point of being over prepared. Mm -hmm. What right. What are the things that you do to prepare yourself for a shoot? Well, the it, depending on what time the shoot is, I'll, a couple hours before, I'll check all of my equipment. But always the night before, I'm making sure all of my batteries are charged. I have a backup battery. Um, I make sure my lenses are clean and I put them in my shoot sack. Everything is prepared so I can just put it on and go. It's, it's really important to me because you are getting paid and so you need to be prepared as possible for your, that job. Well, thanks so much for letting us hang out with you today. Tell us again where we can find your work. DianaElizabeth.com and DianaElizabethBlog.com. Diana Elizabeth. Yes blog dianaelizabeth.com mm -hmm. awesome well thank you so much for thank hanging you. out well there you have it our interview with diana elizabeth to see more of her work visit dianaelizabeth.com
www.howtodoit.com. Well, if you have somebody that you'd like to see on how they do that, please send your suggestion to me at askmark at adorama.com. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you again next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.